Sir, yes. So, so thank you. I'm Komal Prasad. I'm a neurosurgeon. Yes. Uh, basically, uh, my original interest was to find myself, and that's my area where I explored was through neurosurgery. And to extend this, I have physically seen all parts of the brain, and there is nothing which we can see as a substrate of consciousness anywhere in the brain. So <laughs> that's something. And yes. uh, you were, and basically, I'm an Advaitin. So I try to teach. Advaita in whatever possible way and uh, your way of approaching logically is something very interesting and which is easy to make the appeal to the people. Where I get stuck is about explaining Ananda. Mm. Like Satyan Chit is something which is easy and it is logically explainable. What was the need to bring in Ananda? Ananda, yes. Uh, how to take it to in a logical way to create an appeal of the need for Ananda. Yes. I'll make an observation about that. And then we'll take one more question and, and wrap it up because we are running out of time. We have run out of time. But all of these are really good questions. And, um, you know, there's a word in Sanskrit, rasik. Rasika means a person who enjoys the rasa. So you enjoy the rasa of Advaita. To be in a group like that, it's very enjoy enjoyable. One, can, one feels one can go on and on. But I won't, I promise. People are beginning, are beginning to look horrified. <laughs> yes. Uh, before I talk about the Anand aspect, the uh, neuroscience, it's good that it's, it's, we are in a very exciting new time for neuroscience uh, and for consciousness studies. Right now, consciousness studies is booming. One of the leading consciousness studies, uh, uh, this brain scientists, Christoph Koch. So I remember he was in a debate with David Chalmers. And I attended that debate. And uh, it ended with, I think, one of them, maybe David Chalmers pouring a glass of water on top of Christoph Koch <laughs> in, in humor. But Christoph Koch said that when I entered this field, consciousness studies, uh, my colleagues told me, you are killing your career. This will never go anywhere. Nobody, you cannot make any discovery. It is a too ambitious a subject. But now you see, it's a, it's a hot subject. It's really, people are very interested in it. Ananda aspect. Yes. Uh, often uh, when I speak, some people notice after some time. You're talking about sat and chit. You talk about existence awareness. What about ananda? When will I be happy? <laughs> and why bring in ananda at all? Why bring in ananda at all? You know, recently it struck me one answer to your question. It struck me, the three greatest questions in philosophy, all of philosophy, three greatest, uh, the branches of philosophy, the mainstream branches of philosophy, uh, metaphysics, now it is known as ontology. They deal with the question of what is real? What's real? What's the ultimate reality? Second question, uh, second branch of philosophy, epistemology, it deals with the question, how do we know anything at all? And the third question, Meaning, purpose, goodness, morals, ethics, beauty, all of these. Earlier there was ethics, there was aesthetics. All of them have now been put together under one branch called axiology. So three branches. Philosophy is covered in three branches. Ontology, epistemology and axiology. Reality, knowledge, values. And now I think, I think some of you are beginning to get it. Sat, Chit, Ananda. What is ultimately real? Sat, pure being. How is any experience, any knowledge, anything knowable at all possible? Chit, because it is consciousness. What is the point of life? What is the value of life? What good is it? What is the purpose, goal? Ananda. And the Advaita, the tremendous breakthrough is this Sat and this Chit and this Ananda are one and the same thing. And that is you. You are the reality of this universe. You are the light of this universe. And you are the goal, purpose and value of this universe. You, each of us. A tremendous uh, uh, discovery. Now, where is this Ananda? What, what are we talking about? Here is the thing. When we say Ananda, immediately it comes to our mind, smiley face. <laughs> fun. I must be having fun. Advaita is not fun. Where is this Ananda? But when we speak about ananda, we don't mean any particular feeling. Just as when I speak about sat, existence, I don't mean any particular existing thing. 
That's why I think for all the dangers, Shunyavada Buddhism is a strong corrective to Advaita Vedanta. They seem to be totally opposite. When you study them, you find them eerily similar and yet opposite. One is talking about infinite existence, Brahman. Other one is talking about complete emptiness. I will tell you something that may be shocking to you. You search for the Atman, search for Brahman, you will never find anything. Never. There is no such thing. There is no such thing. Swami, you are cheating us all this time. Long talk. Listen to what I said carefully. There is no such thing. Okay, there is nothing. No, not nothing. See, things, existing things are one one level of reality. But existence itself is a deeper level of reality. What I mean by saying there is no such thing as Atman Brahman, I mean that Atman Brahman is not a thing. You can count the things in this universe, one, two, three, four, and so on, millions and billions, and then you will come to plus one Atman inventory, I've completed uh, inventory. Atman is, has been, Brahman has been found. No, you will never find Brahman that way. Because Sat, pure being, existence, is not a thing among existing things. One. Two, consciousness, awareness, chaitanya. It is not one type of conscious experience. Seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, waking, dreaming, deep sleep. And then one more thing, pure consciousness. You say, Swami, I just caught you now. Upanishad says, waking, dreaming, deep sleep, Duriya. Gross misunderstanding of Advaita Vedanta. Gross misunderstanding. Duriya is not one more state. It is the reality of these three states. Gold is not another kind of ornament. It is the reality of all these golden ornaments. Which is more real? Don't say ornament. Gold is more real. So, Chit, consciousness, is not another type of conscious experience. Now take up Ananda. What kind of Ananda? So some joy, more joy, tremendous joy and beyond that Ananda, Swami? No. What is joy, greater joy, greatest joy? Priya, Moda, Pramoda, all these Upanishadic terms. All of them are manifestations of one reality. That's, that is Ananda. But Ananda by itself is not a particular, you know, what Americans would say, particular high. <laughs> they are all, all seeking a high, new high. Marijuana gives one type of high and Vedanta will give another type of high. No, it's not another high. It's not a high or a low. That which underlies all your highs and lows. Shankaracharya says, there is an ocean of bliss within, within us. The spray, just the spray, the droplets of water, the spray from which all of humanity is madly running after, life after life. The entire ocean is within you means it is you. That is Ananda. Not a particular type of bliss. Just as Sat being is not a particular existing thing. Chit is not particular type of experience. All experiences are possible because of Chit. All existing, existing things, smallest to biggest, is possible because of Sat. And all value, purpose, goodness, beauty in life, all fulfillment is possible because of Ananda. Still the question will be nagging. So when I realize I am Brahman, Satchidananda, I will not feel happy. That is my whole goal. You don't have to worry about that. You will feel very happy, guaranteed. Just look at the lives of enlightened people. Look at their faces. Any tradition you find, I am not talking only about Advaita Vedanta here. Whether it is a devotional tradition, whether it is a Vedanta tradition, enlightened people in every, spiritual people in every uh, spiritual tradition are very, very happy, very fulfilled, the happiest and most fulfilled in all of life. Some people ask, all this is great, but it sounds very boring. After I realize I am Brahman, it's finished. No, it's finished. Very boring. No, it's not boring. Proof. Look at the lives of those who have realized. Are they bored? One thing, they are never. They are never bored. They are always bubbling with fresh enthusiasm, happiness. Uh, if you take a psychological test of those people, they will come out as off the charts happy. Off the charts happy. Yeah. Hmm. Not also, so underlying all of this, the implication is non-attachment to forms, ideas, feelings. Yes, 
it's it's right the question is so aren't is this the implication that non attachment to forms ideas in our psyche we attach it to the, this way so isn't this the implication of what you are saying absolutely remember what i uh, said that uh, at the level of mind this um, samata seeing seeing the same everywhere at the level of our activities day to day to day dealings with the world detachment yeah that's the implication and if you practice it from that side you will the path to realization become much faster much much more clear non identification yeah. because in your real real nature you are not identified with anything good i think that's a wonderful discussion let me do a